way for U.S.-Russian cooperation on a yet-to-be-assembled International Space Station. The U.S. flew three missions to a short-lived space station, Skylab, in 1973 and 74. Mir's core module rocketed into orbit 12 years later in 1986. Over the next four years, it was expanded. Three more working modules were added. During that time, the Cold War thawed. The U.S. and Russia began discussions on cooperation rather than competition in space. And that led to a three-part agreement in 1993. Phase one called for 11 joint space flights over a four-year period. Phases two and three involved the development, launch, and assembly of a new space station. Its components now are under construction on Earth. In February 1994, the space shuttle discovery included its first Russian cosmonaut as a crew member. One year later, Mir got its first visit from a space shuttle, although the two craft did not link up. Also in 1995, Mir got its first ever U.S. crew member. Astronaut Norm Thagard rode into space with the Russians and returned after the first ever shuttle Mir docking in June 1995. That same mission brought two Russians up to Mir. A continuous U.S. presence aboard Mir began in March 1996. Shannon Lucid flew for 188 days, the longest ever stay in space for a U.S. astronaut. John Blaha was next. And when he went home, Jerry Leninger came aboard. It was during Leninger's stay that Mir's string of big problems began. There was a fire in February. In May, U.S. astronaut Michael Fole replaced Leninger. Fole endured last June's collision between an unmanned supply ship and Mir. Now, as David Wolf continues the U.S. presence on Mir, the first piece of the new space station should fly into orbit in 1998. Crews will start living there in 1999 as assembly continues. Full completion is set for mid-2002.